good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Spotlight. Today, we're privileged to be able go, to go over to Alito, Texas, where we find Cars Tour driver Caden Honeycutt. Caden, how are you doing this evening? Doing great, Rod. How about yourself? I'm doing awesome, man. So let's just dive right into this. I mean, you've got an amazing season going on in the Cars Tour. I, you're literally setting three points out of the lead. I mean, did you think this is where you would be at this time of the season, uh, being your rookie season? Well, I would. I really expected us to have a good good year. Um, even though this is my first stock time in a late model stock, I really did ex expect it out of myself to perform the way I needed to perform and do whatever I needed to do to be in the points championship battle and try to win this year as well. And we've done that this year too. So um, I really fully expect it for myself uh, coming into with a new team. Um, looking at their past results, they've kind of struggled. So I was really trying to um, boost their confidence up and, you know, as a team effort, get everything where it needed to be. So I think we did, uh, we're doing a fantastic job right now and hopefully we keep it up the rest of the year. I mean, you're what we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or eight races in. You've only finished outside of the top 10 once. You've got your first win at, uh, at Langley Speedway. You've got one, two, three, you got four top fives, um, not counting some late model stock non court cars tour races that you did at Hickory, where you won both of those, um, those twin 40 lap features there. So, I mean, I, I would think you've got to be really pleased uh, with, with kind of the gel that you, you've gotten um, created with yourself and Justin Johnson racing. Oh, 100 percent. We've done uh, they just done a fantastic job. Uh, I think what the biggest thing that we have accomplished this year is combining the two teams to work together. Um, so the start of the year, we were kind of doing our own thing, uh, not really going off of what Marcus and uh, Justin were doing. And I think after we ventured off to that after ACE, uh, the first race we did that was at Caraway. And then obviously showed uh, we were leading the race. But unfortunately, we had a late race restart. But uh, came back with the same thing at Langley and won the race at Langley. And we've been doing the same stuff ever since. And it's obviously showed um, even the triple car races. We've done all, an amazing job at South Boston. We had a left front shock break after the halfway break. So that was kind of unfortunate, but we backed it up with the third at Hampton Heat. So we've just done such a great job at executing and uh, just unfortunate mishaps that really are out of our control, but we've done uh, just a great job and, you know, just, yeah, everybody just needs to keep it up and not back down, and hopefully we'll uh, cap off the championship with this year, too. So the next race that you've got up is at Motor Mile Speedway. Um, what can you tell us about that track, and are you looking forward to it? And and then what is it that you're, you're going to be a little bit cautious about at that track to make sure that you come away with hopefully a win, but if not, at least a, a, a top five finish? Well, the crazy part about Motor Mile is I did not really expect racing there this year because I thought it was supposed to be closed down. So um, going back and looking at old, the old races, I've really seen that, you know, it, it's going to be a really fast race. Um, I don't think there's much tire wear at Motor Mile as much there is uh, these other places that we go to. But uh, you're just going to have to conserve your brakes. I think it's going to be a little uh, – it's a high-pressure Martinsville is what I like to see it as. So we're just going to have to uh, stay clean, so keep our nose. It's going to be a little bit of a dog fight of a race, and um, you're just going to have to come on on top. And it's the same thing that we're going to come up with with the next couple of tracks. We're just going to have to be really smart. And if you can't just dominate the race, you're just going to have to realize that we're going to have to get the most points of what we can. So just got to stay smart and, you know, just not try to beat everybody off and just do the right thing. So it's just going to be a high fast race. I'm just going to – uh, conserve your part, uh, conserve your pieces at the end. So on the schedule, we show five races remaining, and then possibly the the makeup race from from Wake County. Um, and then, you know, I, I think that Rockingham race, that last race, I still think that one's kind of up in the air. I, I mean, I know it's on the schedule, but with everything that's going on with the tires and everything, um, I'm, I'm not really sure that race is going to come off. It might. Uh, that would be uh, one heck of a place to go and and be down to to fighting for the championship. That track is fast, but so is there any of the tracks that you're looking forward to going to, and is there any of the tracks that maybe you're a little cautious about going to between now and the end of the season? 
Well, the one cautious track I'm going to say is most likely going to be Wake County. Um, everybody has said it's going to be a really, uh, it's going to be a big old battle between everybody, uh, Doran and everything. So um, I haven't heard too much great things about that racetrack, but the tracks I am looking forward to is Florence, South Boston, uh, Tri-County, which I haven't been to yet, but Justin really loves that racetrack and says I like it, so I'll take his word for it. Um, I would, I mean, I've just been looking forward to the rest of the races, uh, you know, but besides Wake County, which we're really going to have to uh, capitalize on, and I think that's going to be a make or break uh, points race uh, going into the last race at South Boston, especially with the two being back to back now. Um, so we're just going to have to be smart about that race, but I'm really looking forward to the rest of these races, and uh, I really think these tracks are kind of to my liking, so that will be a great thing to look forward to for us. Well, now, Caden, everybody knows how good you are in the super late model and, you know, what you've, what you've been able to accomplish in the blizzard and the snowball derby. What has, and just real quickly, what has been the biggest thing that you've had to learn moving from that super late model to the late model stock? So I really think that the super is a lot more rear dependent. Um, with the late model stock, it's all in the front. It's just a big old truck arm archetype race car just like another race car uh like a nascar type car so just the biggest thing about a super is whatever you have for the race it, you, if you feel like you're not going to be very good it's probably not going to end very well but as we proved the late mile stock at hickory we i mean we qualified 26 out of 29 we made the decision to pull it out and make some changes just like you can in the super but that's kind of a too late of a thing and we drove from 29th to 7th so the biggest part I've learned about a stock car, or the late mile stock, is that you can drive the crap out of it every single lap. The super has got to be a much more detailed line, much more detailed wheel inputs with tires. It's just a very delicate race car. The late mile stock, you can ha manhandle the car really well. Um, I think with the NASCAR type, nobody really saves tires uh, unless you go to a place like Martinsville with a high braking zone. You know, the, the trucks, Xfinity and Cup, uh, they're not going 70, 80 percent at any point in the race. They're going 100 percent every single lap. So that's the difference between a late mile stock and a super that I've learned over the last couple of years. Now, you brought up Martinsville. That is the last race of the Triple Crown. Are you looking forward to going there? Absolutely. Um, on the sim, I'm really, I really love the racetrack. We actually won a road to pro race in the pro series at Martinsville. So I really love the racetrack and everybody said it's been a hectic race every time when it comes down to Martinsville. So hopefully we'll come out on top and not be in the big old, uh, as the big one, as they say in Martinsville in the last triple crown. And we're right there in points too. So hopefully we can uh, get the triple crown too. Now, what a lot of the, the viewers that are watching this right now may not know is how big of an eye racer that you actually are. Uh, give us a quick rundown of where you're standing at and the road to pro and what's ahead. So we've moved on to the round of uh, 70, which is round two of, of what you would call like playoffs. Um, they had over 1,284 people to start uh, the first round and they only took 70 out of the first round. And then uh, we have, I, I believe, four more races now. We go to the Rockingham next week. Um, I'm sitting sixth in points right now after we've raced Knoxville, Homestead, and uh, Watkins Glen, which was I was not expecting to finish in the top ten at Watkins for how much I'm not a very good road course driver. But we're going to have four more races left in the seven races, and they're going to take the top 20 that moves on to what's called the Pro Series, and we drive the uh, Xfinity car. And then they take the top 20 out of the out of five, no, no, six races. And after the six races, the top 20 in points, whoever finishes in front of one other, they go into the uh, what's called the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, which NASCAR teams are getting involved in, which is an awesome thing. And um, I just, I've really just enjoyed the, not at track, and not at the actual racetrack. I'm actually down the sim and practicing and learning setups on my own and trying to figure out uh, the best way possible to make cars go faster and whatever I can do that doesn't involve uh, an on-track activity. Off-track, you're still learning and do whatever you can to get better. And you've been pretty impressive there in the iRacing because um, I know on several occasions you found yourself out on the East Coast actually having to get behind the wheel of someone else's sim um, so that you didn't compete. How tough has that been? 
Well, it was actually kind of crazy. For the entire <clears throat> first round, I wasn't on my sim whatsoever. So that was a, a big challenge for me. But we ended up locking in with, uh, I, I believe I was 12th in points going into the last race, and I was like 600 points above the cut line. So I didn't even have to race the last race. But um, I raced my team owner's uh, sim, Justin, Justin Johnson's sim, and I actually like his sim more than my own. So <laughs> that wasn't a big deal for me, but – practicing uh, every day of the week, the last two weeks of my own stuff, and then going out there on the day of the race and trying to get used to everything, it's, it's a little difficult. So um, I've, we've done, an, our, our setups from Nexus have done an amazing setup. So we've done, I've put in the last couple of uh, weeks, but um, it's just a little tough, but I, I really do enjoy uh, racing on his sim. So that wasn't a huge deal for me, but it is, it is a huge challenge for most people, I would say. Right. So between the between the uh, cars tour racing, the sim racing, you've been able to squeeze in a few dirt model races this year. So give us a quick recap on what your dirt late model seasons look like so far. So we've had a, a, a sim, I would say a semi successful dirt late model year. You know, with me and my dad doing all the work, it's just a lot tougher um, seeing everybody going with teams and stuff like that. So We've done a, a, a semi good job. Uh, we've won, I think, four races this year. Um, we've ran in the top five almost every single race. We just needed to get better in some places, but uh, we've done a, a, a respectable year so far. But we're going, we're getting the motor fix right now, and we head to a fifty thousand dollar crate plate model race at Chatham in the next couple of weeks in September. So we're really looking forward to that, and um, hopefully we'll uh, come back with the motor. Hopefully the horsepower wasn't the problem. So. We're going to see if that we can chop that excuse off for the next couple of times. But we've had a very good, uh, we've had a, a decent year so far. A $50,000 check would be nice, but, you know, um, you, you can spin that real quickly in, in the Cars Tour. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All, every time. But well, with Caden, Cars Tours, you might not have to. Yeah, there you go. Well, Caden, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. For anybody that's watching, if you're not following Caden Honeycutt, Go to CadenHoneycutRacing.com. Make sure to go into his fan zone. Click on the uh, uh, get his to get his digital newsletter. Uh, you can get some free hero cards there. Um, but anyway, Caden, again, thank you for joining us tonight. Good luck for the rest of the season. Hopefully, we won't have any tire shortages that's going to affect the run. And uh, we're going to see you back here close to the end of the season. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Make sure to check back with us in two weeks, and we'll be back with you. Everybody go out there and have a great race weekend.